If you took one glance at this, what exactly would you say it is? If you guessed a starry night sky, you'd be wrong. However, being wrong isn't too bad if you're human. If you were instead an insect, that might be the last thought you have. This light show is actually a product of Arachnocampa luminosa, the New Zealand glowworm. This worm is an interesting organism that lives in an extreme environment and has the ultimate adaptation for it. Before we can begin examining the life cycle of Arachnocampa luminosa, we must first have a basic understanding of its environment. Now caves are generally considered extreme environments because of several factors including that they are dark, humid, nutrient deficient, mineral dense areas. One of the most defining factors of caves other than the fact that they are underground is that they have little or no sunlight. Because of this, Many creatures that live in caves no longer rely on photosynthetic material as a basis for their food chains. Um, in fact, many caves get their nutrients from cave streams and rivers that may run through them or beside them. Uh, and random animals wandering in carrying nutrients. But one of the main factors is the animals that live in caves that leave to either complete their life cycle or to feed, and they bring back a lot of nutrients. Uh, in fact, many caves rely completely on backwater as their nutrient source. Yet, there are many dangers in caves, including a possibility of toxic gas buildup that may occur because there is no ventilation. Paranthocampa luminosa has adapted well to this environment. We will begin the life cycle of the New Zealand glowworms. These glowworms have four different stages. The egg stage, the larva stage, the pupa stage, and the adult stage. The egg stage. During the egg stage, there's a milky mass, and it takes up to 35 days to hatch, depending on its temperature. When it's Cold, it can take a little bit longer. When it's hot, it takes less of time, like around 27 days to hatch. And when it cracks, there's a larva and it pops out of it. And it's only like five millimeters long. And the glowworm, it spends most of this life and this life cycle about like around nine, nine months or so. And it spends most of its time trying to feed and build up its food reserves so it'll have a lot of energy supply during its adult stage, which is this stage up here. After the larva stage, there's, here's the pupa stage. During the pupa stage, most of the larvae's organs are broken down and they are forming into adults. It takes only about 11 to 15 days compared to the larva stage, which is like nine months or so. Now we're gonna talk about the adult stage. During the adult stage, there is a structural difference and the male and female, the male has wings as you can see right here and the female does not. The female spends most of this time using its feed reserves and trying to mate so her energy supply won't run out. Uh, the male <clears throat> is very active. It's a more active partner and it uses these, its wings to fly and it uses these antennas to mate with the females these antennas are very sensitive and during mating, the male, it puts its antennas down the female's back to start mating. As we know, the New Zealand glowworm, the Arachnocampa luminosa, spends most of its life cycle in the larval stage. Now, why is it that they spend so much time in this stage? Well, 
For one, this is the stage where they have strong, forceful mouths, and they need all the energy they can get before the adult stage, where they lose their mouths and only have about a day and a half to live. So in this larval stage, they need to acquire food stores large enough to supply that mating ritual. Now, how do they find food in the dark, in a dark cave environment? Well, it's simple. They make their own light. And how? Well, it's, it's a combination of a couple of substances. The first being luciferin. Now, luciferin reacts with luciferase, its enzyme, and allows oxygen, diatomic oxygen molecules, to come in and excite the electrons in the luciferin. Well, once it reaches that excited stage, it drops back down to its ground stage. That drop creates the light that you see from their tails. Now, it uses this adaptation for two purposes. Its first purpose is mating. Now, once in the pupa stage, once they hatch out, the males dry off their wings and try to find a female pupa. Once it finds one, it lands on the pupa, lights up, and then causes the female to light up inside. At that point, the light is bright enough to where all the males start swarming, and this causes a, a type of gladiator match, where whoever lasts the longest gets to mate with the, the female. It's a bit extreme, yeah. The female, now if the female does not have a male waiting outside of its pupa, it automatically lights up. And then if waiting for long enough, it starts blinking as if it were a beacon to attract the males. Now that's the first adaptation. The second is this adaptation to attract and trap food. Now they make these nets, these um, web-like contraptions. We call them fishing lines because of the way that they eat. So first, they make the hollow nest on top, which they travel through and secrete thread-like um, thread -like structures, about a dozen or so for each. And on each structure, there are globs of uh, mucus, mucus that contain paralytic or anesthetic chemicals. Now, insects, they discern this light that these glowworms give off as the stars, as we see in the first picture. They think that this is the sky. So, as we know, as we all know, insects are attracted to light. So they fly up, 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 and then they hit one of these threads. Once they hit the thread, they can't move. They struggle, they struggle, but they're being paralyzed. So once they struggle and they vibrate, it causes the glowworm to know that they caught an insect or otherwise, and they pull it up and suck all of its juices out, sometimes even eating the whole insect. They can resort to cannibalism. Uh, this uh, is also good in evolutionary terms as a survival of the fittest. In this next video, we'll see exactly how the glowworms make this fishing line. Each glowworm produces dozens of these threads. Once its lines are set, the glowworm hangs from a mucus hammock and waits like a patient angler. But the glowworm doesn't leave everything to chance. That ghostly blue light is the result of a chemical reaction taking place inside a special capsule in its tail. The light literally shines out of its backside. It's a lure for attracting prey.
insects seem irresistibly drawn towards the source and then get trapped by the sticky limes. Once stuck, there is no escape. Now it's just a matter of reeling in the line and slowly consuming the catch alive. We humans have it easy when compared to organisms such as the New Zealand glowworm. We have little need to adapt, whereas the worms have done an incredible job of surviving and even thriving in such an extreme place. Using its ability to make light, the Arachnocampa luminosa is truly a champion adapter. The next time you look into the stars, ask yourself, is this really what I think it is?